Welcome, welcome, welcome. In this week's video, I am going to show you my February bullet journal layouts. Um, I went with sort of a puppy theme, puppies and hearts. It's mostly hearts, but for my cover, I did a nice puppy. Of course, I did my monthly content. I really love that spread. It's my favorite one. I kept everything else very simple because I've discovered the main thing I use this bullet journal for is to create content for YouTube, for my Patreons and things like that. So I kept it very simple, yet very colorful. I broke out all of the reds and the pinks because of course it's Valentine's. Now I do know that it is the Chinese Lunar New Year, but I did that in January and I will link that for you guys. So if we haven't met, I'm Viv. Welcome to Art with Viv and let's just jump right in. Now, of course, I always sketch out my um, design first and on this one, I wanted to use watercolor. So I did it on some hot pressed 140 pound watercolor paper and I cut it to the size of my journal. It is smooth. I also did not film the part where I put my masking fluid on over the word February because I'm going to be painting the hearts that are surrounding February and I want my February to stay white. I mixed up a nice dark color. You could use black from the tube but I, uh, I usually mix my own blacks um, just using like complementary color mixes or for my favorite one if you followed me for even a minute you know my favorite mixture is burnt umber and indigo blue to make a nice deep dark rich color that will substitute for black and of course i'm using that black in different concentrations where i want it to be darker i am using less water more pigment more paint where i want it to be a little bit lighter i'm adding more water because as you know with watercolor you don't um, you use the white of the paper as your white you don't normally use a white watercolor to lighten your color when you do add a white watercolor it usually makes your color more opaque it does lighten it but it makes it more pastel and more opaque and i did not want that so i just add to lighten it add more water and that lightens the color and you'll see that here in just a second when i start on his little face now for his irises i just did a nice little brown of course this pupil is black or my version of black and i just went in with a nice deep reddish brown you know how those puppy dog eyes have the cutest little brown eyes unless they're a different breed that has those icy blue eyes but this is a little pit bull puppy. He's very much like my Mr. Darcy. He's not my Mr. Darcy, but he is very much like him. I picked the color uh, scheme to match my Mr. Darcy. And I did the pattern similar, but it's not exactly the same. Also notice that in the pupils, the black pupils of his eye, I left a little bit of the white of the paper showing a little bit of that. Um, highlight there just to give his eyes some life you could also wait till the end and just add a little bit of white gouache or a white jelly pen but i just used the paper as the white highlight in his eye i mean in his pupil in his eye now you'll see what i was talking about a minute ago i have added a lot more water to that mix of indigo blue and burnt umber to thin it out and make it a lot lighter and I'm going to paint his nose. This is going to be the lightest areas of his nose other than that white highlight that you see right across the top of his nose and that's just plain paper. Then I just mixed up a nice pinky brown. I'm going to do his the inside of his ears and his snout with this little pinky brown color because that's usually what color that the insides of dogs ears and their little muzzle if their muzzle is white and you can see the skin through it you'll see that little pink skin color and where I wanted it darker of course I just used a more concentrated mix of that color meaning less water more paint and I put that on there while it was still wet so that it would just sort of blend in softly and not have hard edges now I'm taking my black mixture again lightening it up with water to thin it out so it's more of a gray and um, just putting that up there. Now I am on Instagram. You can follow me, Art with Viv. If you would like, that's my handle on Instagram as well as here on YouTube. So just thought I'd throw that out there in case you wanted to. So now I'm just going to do some layering. I am going to 
uh, get all of his face painted this really pale watery gray except for of course where his white markings are but just where I want his black markings to be this is going to be the initial layer right under his eye I just left it to be a little bit um, lighter just the the white of the paper but I am going to come back later on and put some wash on that now I'm just coming back in with the pinky pink going ahead putting that on his little snout and on his little chin because Mr. Darcy if you don't know Mr. Darcy he is my studio dog he is my rescue pit bull that I found someone and threw him away as a puppy or just dumped him out found him and it took me quite a while to get him to not be fearful of everything I really worked with him and he has turned out to be the best dog he loves Chick-fil-A we go to Chick-fil-A every Friday we have a standing date and um, I always video that you can see that on my YouTube in my shorts as well and I just love this dog he has been one of the smartest best dogs Although at the beginning, it did take quite a bit of work because I don't know what they did to him before they dumped him out, but he was afraid of everything. So now I'm just going ahead on his shoulders, putting in a darker gray, a little bit darker than his face. I don't need as many light highlights on his shoulder, and I'm carefully painting around those hearts that we have drawn all, all around encompassing him. Now, once that face and nose is dry, I'm just coming back in and adding another layer of that black and just trying to decide what shapes and, you know, where I want the shapes of the shadows to be and all like that. I'm not being too um, particular about smoothing out the edges. I don't care if I have hard edges because I'm going to keep adding layers and each layer I add is going to soften the layer under it so that the edges become softer through layering rather than through taking a wet brush and just sort of you know smoothing it out with a little bit of clean water so it's just I'm experimenting with this one I'm just trying some different techniques kind of doing the opposite of what I normally do to see how it comes out I highly encourage you to do the same sorry about that barking Go ahead and take chances, experiment, do all kinds of things that you would normally do because that is how you learn. So I highly encourage it, highly. You don't have to stick to those hard and fast rules. You can try some different things and see how it works. And um, there's nothing wrong with that. And if it doesn't work, well, then you've learned something. You've learned what doesn't work. <laughs> So now, like I said, I'm sort of doing the opposite of what I normally do. Now I'm adding some of my darkest shadow areas where usually with watercolor, you build up into that. You, you build each layer to get darker and darker until you get to the darkest. But with this one, I am going straight in with where I want my darkest shadows, putting those in there on dry paper. I'm not trying to smooth out the edges with clean water, not, not trying to soften them. I'm going to leave those edges hard because I want to see if each layer that I add will soften those hard edges as I add them just naturally with the water. Now, the only reason I think that this will work is because this combination of colors, the indigo and the burnt umber, is not a highly staining um, color combination. It won't stain the paper, so every time I add a little bit of water, it will soften and it'll be lifted a little bit. Now, if it was a staining color, this would not work as well. And I already know that from, you know, experience. So... I'm not doing this with staining colors and I don't try this method that this little backwards method that I'm doing with staining colors because it it won't work as well staining colors will retain their hard edges they won't soften with each layer they won't lift a little bit with each layer but th these will because they are non staining this this color combination this black that I've created will because it is non staining so now I'm just darkening up those shoulders. I've got those shadows in there on his face. I'm putting in the shadows in his ears. I'm not even bothering with softening them. And this is um, from my imagination, so I don't really have a reference photo. So I'm just kind of thinking in my head, where would the shadows be? How would the light hit his face? And where would those shadows be? Now I'm coming back in 
with another layer and you see it is indeed softening those really dark layers that we put underneath. I've gotten a medium, a medium um, color, a medium color of this gray that it doesn't have too much black in it or too much water. It's sort of medium. I would say it is the consistency of maybe 2% milk and I'm just washing that over the whole area. Now those darker shadows were already dried before I do this, but as you see, that wash softens those dark hard edges. So we're gonna do the same thing to this other side of his face. We're gonna add those shadows right onto the dry paper, and then we're gonna again add a soft wash over that of a medium gray so that it sort of blends the lightest lights and the darkest darks. Now, if you are not very um, confident in your drawing skills, then may I suggest that you join my Patreon. It's only $5 a month. You get all kinds of downloadables related to the YouTube video for this one. You get the downloadable art, you get the outline drawing, and you get all of my layouts for February to download or you can trace them right into your own bullet journal. So it's a really good deal for $5 a month. You really can't beat that. That's, that's pretty good. And I just thought I'd suggest that. And I'll link it below in case you're interested. I have a really good time. Now you can join for free. You just won't get the layouts. You'll get other options. You'll get other benefits. But for my paid members, they get, you know, the premium benefits. So back to this. Back to my little puppy here. We are just covering up those darker darker shadows that we put down first with that lighter layer or really the mid-tone layer and it's kind of melding the light and the dark areas together into two separate tones when i finish i will come back in there and add a, another layer to the darkest darks now i'm taking that pinky brown that i use for the ears but i'm put a little bit more brown in it and i made it a little bit thicker with less water and that's what i'm just painting his little smile in with and i just think he's just as cute as he can be i really really like him so now all i'm doing here is painting in the hearts and i'm just using a variety of reds whatever reds and pinks that you want to mix up there's no rhyme or reason to it i'm just using those for our valentine's theme and um i researched this valentine's i want to know why, why did we start doing valentine's day and actually i found out that there are three different valentines or saint valentines that were actually executed on february the 14th and um valentine's in the beginning it's believed to have started as like a feast celebrating their um executions sort of so i thought that was really weird and i dug a little deeper in it i found out that these none of the three saint valentine's were all that particularly um romantic or you know they wouldn't they weren't all about love but they were all about jesus and or not jesus but god and trying to convert people to christianity and of course this was during the roman empire and the romans weren't having none of that they they were like no you got to worship the emperor or whatever it was the romans and all their roman gods and i think they even thought that their emperors might have been gods i could be wrong about that Just double check it but one of the one of the legends is one of the saint valentines that was beheaded um he was arrested because of course he's out there talking about god and trying to get people to convert to christianity well he was arrested in the roman empire and then he was put into the custody of an aristocrat called i, I might not be pronouncing his name correctly but arterius and um, Arterius made the mistake of just letting him talk. And St. Valentine was like, look, dude, you need to come to Christ. You are, you need to come out of the shadow. You need to be born again, or not, maybe not born again, but you need to get baptized. I don't know what the words they were used back then. And he was like, you know, he is, God is, that's, that's the way you want to go. You got to stop all this pagan stuff. You got to stop worshiping all these other gods. You got to come into the light bro so he was trying to talk him into it and arterius made a bargain with him he said okay okay dude 
if your God is so great, then if you can heal my daughter, he had a foster daughter who was blind. If you can heal her blindness, then, hey, I'll convert. I will become a Christian. I will. I, I'm, I'm with you, dude. And the legend has it that, of course, St. Valentine's placed his hands over the child's eyes. She could see automatically, you know, it was like a miracle. She could see. So, of course, Arterius, good for his word. He converted. His whole family got baptized. And the emperor found out he was pissed. He was like, oh, no, we're not playing this game. And so he had them, the whole family that was baptized, executed. But St. Valentine was the only one that was beheaded. Now, it was also a legend that St. Valentine was a prisoner. One of the St. Valentines, I think this might have been the second one or the third one. The first one died in Africa. I think he was on like a mission mission i'm not sure but he was but we're not going to talk about him we're talking about the third one the third one it legend has it that he actually fell in love with the jailer's daughter and she would come to see him and he would write her love letters and he would sign it your valentine and of course that that greeting or that sentiment has carried on through the ages I don't know if that's true. That's just one of the, you know, one of the, the, um, legends. Another legend has it that it was the Roman church's way of covering up a pagan celebration that happened during February the 14th or during the mid month. And it was kind of a gross one. So I'm glad that one is no longer in, in, the pagan celebration involved sacrificing goats and dogs and young men streaking through the streets, you know, wearing nothing but the thong from the freshly killed goats and dogs. And then pregnant women thought that it would give them a good birth or a good baby if they wore these thongs. And th- it was just, it was gross. It was not, it was gross. So um, that was another legend. Another one is that Saint, one of the St. Valentines got uh, killed because back in the Roman days, they thought that single men made better soldiers, so they didn't allow single men to get married, um, the young ones. They did not marry, um, allow young single men to get married because they wanted soldiers uh, who would be really good fighters, so behind the Romans back St. Valentine was marrying these men to their to their wives and um, and it was found out and of course he was he was killed for that and that's just another there's so many legends so I'm not really sure all I know is St. Valentine was not particularly romantic and he was more about you know preaching the gospel and trying to get people to come over to Christianity And I think that the love connection, where it started to become about love, was during Chaucer's era. He wrote a poem, I think it was the Parliament of Fowls, and in it he he gave the line, now I'm I'm sorry I can't remember the line exactly, but it was during February the 14th when in England at that time the birds would mate and lay eggs in it. The line was about the birds coming and finding their mates during that time, so that's how it kind of got the love connection so either way valentine's is here to stay probably i don't know what's going to happen in you know future thousands of years but for now it's here and we celebrate it and send everybody that we love our you know our little valentine's be my valentine your valentine and that's just how it goes so now back to this i have painted in all of the hearts i have outlined my february with a micron pen use a waterproof ink one and i'm outlining my heart and that is just to give it a little bit more dimension and to kind of separate the february from the hearts because it was kind of blurring in together so i don't know that's just my you don't have to do this this is an optional step i thought it would you know look better like that Again, it's your painting, it's your artwork. You do what you think is going to look the best. Just use mine as a guide. 
And if anybody hasn't told you lately, you're doing a great job. Keep going. Don't give up on your hopes and dreams of, you know, artistic excellence. So now I have whipped out my jelly pen, got my jelly pen going, my white jelly pen, and I'm just adding some highlights to those hearts just to give them a little extra dimension and to lighten them up just a touch. I also decided just to add a little bit of highlight, some expression marks, if you want to call them that, onto my puppy's face, just in some different areas. Again, this is optional. I just wanted to see how it would look, and I'm okay with it. It's not the best, but I I'm okay with it, so I'm just going to leave those and put in some little white highlights. And it, and it gives them more of an expression. And I'm putting those white highlights sort of near the darkest darks. So there's a high contrast there. So you can really see those white highlights. So now we're going to have to put him into the journal. And all I did, of course, I cut him to the size of the journal. I'm just going to take my, uh, they call it glue tape. Now, I, I don't know why it's called glue tape. But I'm just going to glue it into my journal and then I'll take my corner cutter and cut those corners so that they match the curved corners of my journal and just get them in there real good and then we're just going to cut those corners and then we are going to start on the calendar layout that that one corner right there is tough there we finally got it there all right so all I'm going to do there is take my micron pen now if you want your calendar to be you know really straight and perfect use a ruler I'm not using a ruler I'm just free handing it I like the free handed look in my journal and so I don't get myself all up in a tizzy about it the one tip I can give you is if you're going to free hand it make those lines like when you're drawing your lines and trying to keep them straight draw them toward your body that will help you keep them more they're not going to be perfect but they'll be more straight and just going to add the dates and all of that still again with my black marker and then we are going to work on doing the hearts at the bottom now i'm chosen to do the hearts on this page with my tombow markers Watercolor is a little bit rough on this paper, on the actual bullet journal paper. Um, so the markers actually do a little bit better. They don't cause the paper to buckle and all that. So all I did was pick out a variety of pinks and reds. And I'm just going to do the same thing over here on the bullet journal page on my calendar spread that I did with the watercolor hearts. And just vary the different colors of each heart. Then we're going to, again, outline them, give them a little bit of white highlight with the jelly roll, and that's really all there is going to be to it. I even went with some really sort of maroon hearts. I just wanted a little bit of a contrast there. You can do your hearts any color you want. I don't care. It's your hearts. You do it the way you want to do it. This is just the way I did it. You could even use watercolor. You can use the same watercolors if you like. Just know that your journal paper may buckle or it may peel a little bit if it's not a good heavyweight journal paper. So now I'm just finishing up these hearts and just trying to mix and match my colors. Just use a variety. 
of pinks and maroons and reds and light pinks, whatever you have, it's up to you. And once you get them all in there exactly like you want, just get another little one in here and just one more. Then you'll just outline those just like you did your others with your black pen. Let's put in the days of the week. Just go ahead with that since I got my black pen back out. And then just outline your hearts. I mean, this is it. This is a pretty simple spread. Maybe the dog might have a little bit of complication to it, but it's really easy. I mean, it's a puppy. It's it's also meant to be like an illustration or a cartoon, so you don't have to be so super hyper realistic. And again, if you you know if you're not really confident in your drawing skills then remember i have my patreon it's five dollars a month you can get the outline drawings and all of the supply lists and color guides and things like that and i'll link that below for you just in case i mean if that's something you'd be interested in if not there is a free version of my patreon you just don't get all of those premium benefits so now again I'm just highlighting highlighting my hearts giving them a little bit of definition with that jelly roll pen and I think it's looking really really pretty I really love this layout I really love the February the whole February uh, theme that I did it's so simple it's just hearts and I did a puppy at the beginning and then on the fifth week of February I did a puppy and I'm going to do the puppy as just an exclusive video coloring that puppy on the fifth week for my patron pa patrons in patreon just as their added benefit and you'll see i think you'll see that at if you'll go back to the beginning when i flip through it's a little yorkshire terrier puppy so there you go we have um we have created our cover and our calendar layout thank you for watching i want to give a special shout out to my patrons because without you and your support i couldn't continue to do this so thank y'all so much thanks for watching and i will see y'all again soon